High school teacher Tara Faye Grinstead vanished from her Georgia home in October of 2005. The scene in Tara's house was was ambiguous to us. We did not know if a struggle had occurred there or not. I don't know. The popular educator, also a former beauty pageant contestant, lived alone in the town of Osceola, about 200 miles south of Atlanta. Her disappearance alarmed friends and baffled investigators. We needed more information because we had a situation in which many people had been in the residence that day and also several persons had been in the residence before law enforcement arrived. The search for clues into Tara Grinstead's whereabouts would last for more than a decade. A billboard with her photo and tip line number loomed for years in the area, along with hopes she would be found. Hundreds of people were interviewed, but leads dried up and the case went cold. You're convinced you will find her. I am convinced we will, one way or the other. Then in February 2017, more than 10 years after the 30-year-old disappeared, police arrested Ryan Duke and charged him with burglary, aggravated assault, murder, and concealment of a body. Not long after Ryan's arrest, police brought charges against his friend, Bo Dukes. The two were former students at the high school where Grinstead taught. They were part of the graduating class of 2002. Their names were similar but spelled differently. It was more than their names that bonded them together. Ryan and Bo shared a secret, and Bo kept that secret for years until he told it to Ryan's brother at a party. He said that he knew who had killed Tara Grinstead, and I said, who? And he said, your brother. That is Stephen Duke, Ryan's brother testifying at the trial of Bo Dukes in 2019. I asked him, kind of shocked, what do you mean? And he said, your brother killed her. I said, are you serious? He said, no, I'm just playing. Don't tell anybody. But Bo wasn't joking when he confessed to investigators that Ryan allegedly told him he broke into Grinstead's home to rob her for drug money, but ended up strangling her. Grinstead's body has never been recovered, but Bo's confession helped crack the case. Bo said he helped Ryan move Grinstead's body from a large pecan orchard where Duke had dumped the body to a nearby pine grove. Bo then assisted Ryan in burning the body. Bo was convicted for his role in the crime. The jury found him guilty of concealing Grinstead's death and lying to the Georgia Bureau of Investigation. He was sentenced to serve 25 years in prison. It's not clear if he will turn state's evidence against his friend Ryan when he's tried for Grinstead's murder. Ryan has pled not guilty and maintains his innocence. A sad case. Uh, it took years for an arrest, but now you've got Bo Dukes, Ryan Duke, um, and, and you've got some evidence, but you don't have a body in the case still. Let's bring in our special guest joining us from Savannah, Georgia, criminal defense attorney Chris Schneider is with us. Chris, uh, great to see you. Let, Thank let, you, Andy. Let me start here. This is taking place in Osceola, Georgia, small town, South Georgia. Um, what, how would you describe that to, to viewers, and, and what's it like to be a criminal defendant charged with uh, killing a local beauty queen and someone that was loved by the community? It, it's a really small community. The whole county has 9,500 and something people. Um, by now, I, I think most of them know the majority of things going on with the case. I think they're going to have a hard time picking a, picking a jury that's going to be able to be fair and impartial. How much of a, of a problem will it be for prosecutors that they've never recovered uh, Tara's body? There, I think the prosecutors are going to have several problems with the case they've they've got just a, a little bit of touch dna evidence um that does that the defense lawyers are challenging they have a confession that the defense lawyers are saying is is a false confession um and that's all they really have they, they possibly have bo dukes um coming in to testify but he's got his own set of of issues and problems well let's talk about that and and you know will these two be you know duking it out in court. I mean, I could see Ryan Duke and, and pointing the finger at Bo Dukes. This is someone who's already admitted some level of involvement in all this. 
Uh, it seems like a logical potential defense that a big part of it will be pointing out what uh, Bo Dukes has done. Do you think prosecutors bring him in as a witness? Do they have to bring him in as a witness? Um, I, I think they're going to have a hard time if they try and bring him in. He's already con he's already pled guilty to some of the things in the case. But more importantly than that, subsequent to to him coming forward as a witness, he, he got his own sexual assault charges that are now pending against him um, from two women um, in another county as well. Well, let me ask you about that. Could that come into the case? How much do you think the jury will find out about Bo Dukes if he does not testify? Will they know that a Bo Dukes exists? I mean, can the defense uh, get evidence about these other charges uh, that Bo Dukes is facing? I don't know if they're going to be able to get that in unless he does, in fact, testify. Um, they'll have to have a hearing on that in front of the judge and, and determine that at that time. But if he does testify, he, he's subject to cross-examination, and I think a lot of those things are going to come in. So someone who potentially helped prosecutors put some of the pieces together for their theory of the case, um, from your perspective, may be a very dangerous witness for them to actually introduce in front of this jury. I think he will. I think he will be exactly that. I think he'll never survive a, a cross-examination by Ms. Merchant on the case. And um, what are your thoughts about juries down there, though? Uh, to me, I just get the feeling that they're relatively conservative, don't look kindly on criminal defendants in general, uh, and Ryan Duke has his own uh, little bit of a history of a, of a problematic life. Uh, do you think that ends up being a factor here uh, if and when you do get 12? Well, especially in a, in a small community like that with not many people, I think you're right on all, all the points you have just made. And then you also have the whole issue of COVID and the pandemic and how juries are going to respond to that and whether they're going to respond to their jury summons and whether they're even going to want to be there in the first place. Another big issue. Chris Snyder, yeah. uh, great to have you on the program tonight. Thanks so much. Hey, thank you, Vinny. I appreciate the time. Thank you. All right. When we come back, uh, we're going to, oh, on the, look at this. Um, we're tracking it, but like Chris was saying, you've got COVID, you've got all these problems. Uh, no trial date yet uh, for Ryan Duke. There's also been some appellate issues involving uh, some, some uh, financial uh, help that Duke needs for investigators, et cetera. So we'll continue to follow this. Uh, but 